I'm not gonna lie, when I'm out at the grocery store, you might not even recognize me, and it's okay, I like it like that. But I made up my mind that if I have somewhere to be, <laughs> baby, I'm gonna be somewhere looking like somebody. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ronka, and I create content on travel, career, and godly living. If that sounds like your sort of thing, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the good stuff. In today's video, I'm talking about how I got my groove back after becoming a mom. So I would say my experience um, as a new mom, which I'm sure a lot of people can probably relate to, is that sometimes you just get so caught up in adjusting to this new role and being a mom and taking care of another person that you can start to lose yourself if you're not very careful. Now don't get me wrong, it is an extremely important and very fulfilling role, but we should never base our entire personality off of just one role that we play. You are more than your nine to five, you are more than your marital status, you are more than any role that you play in any area of life. You are a human being that is made up of multiple parts and hopefully is able to play all of those parts very well. Now in this video, I'll be sharing three key things that I've used navigating this season that ultimately have helped me to get my groove back. First thing that I would say is that community matters. In any sort of role that you are playing, I honestly feel like we all have to have community, um, especially when you're talking about parenthood. Like it is so important to have people that you can talk to, relate to, people that you can trust, people that you can vent to, like whatever it is, it is important to have people by you. There's this old adage that it takes a village to raise a child. And I know nowadays, you know, the village looks a lot different. And for some people, unfortunately, maybe they don't really have that village, but I still strongly believe that that saying is reality. It does take a lot of effort, a lot of people to raise a child. Um, you know, from the perspective of just caring for the child, you cannot do everything for your child 24 seven because you have to sleep. You have to rest, you have to eat, you have to use the bathroom, you have to, um, you know, sometimes you might even take a nap on top of the sleep that you've gotten. So it is extremely important that you find a way to have other people that you can rely on so that you're not being the one-all be-all for your child. In addition with community, I think for me, one of the important things that I've picked up from seeing other parents um, or other individuals rather kind of transition into parenthood was just the importance of having human interaction. Babies are so precious, they are so cute, but I mean, unless they're speaking boss, I mean, even if they are speaking boss baby language, I don't understand that. <laughs> so it is extremely hard sometimes to feel that you are able to engage actively with a child. You know, you can engage with your child, you can play with them, you can, you know, read them stories, you can get reactions out of them depending, of how, depending on how old they are, but it's not the same as being able to speak face to face or even over the phone with someone who is able to reason like you or able to reason at the same level as you. Someone that you can tell, oh, I went to the grocery store and I didn't see this thing and I was so shocked that I didn't see that. You know, someone that actually reacts in a way that makes sense and not just <laughs> giggle. <laughs> so it is extremely important to have a community. When you do have others that you can rely on, that is how you avoid getting burnt out. There's a Bible passage that says a friend nearby is better than a brother far away. And I love this verse because it really makes it clear that having actual people that you can rely on that are around you is needed you know don't get me wrong don't drop your brother or your friends that are far away just because they're far away but you also need to make sure that you have people in your local community and so this can be an opportunity where you find yourself a local church um, or another opportunity maybe to find like those local mom groups on Facebook um, I think there's also the opportunity to go to like a nearby park or if your child is in daycare maybe finding um, other parents at the daycare who you might get along with. So there are some options there, but really it is important to make sure that you are in community. The second thing that I found extremely important during the season is taking care of myself. Taking care of my baby, I'm not gonna lie, has been the best thing ever and it is so important to me and I love it. And you know, I have my child on a sleep schedule. I know all about week windows. I know all about, you know, the purees and, you know, making food for her and, and cooking for her and doing all this stuff. And I do all of that. That's great. But you also, also, also have to take care of yourself. If you do not take care of yourself well, it is going to limit how well you're able to take care of your child or anyone else in your life. It's similar to like when you go on a plane and they tell you, put on your mask first before you put someone else's mask on. Um, you have to fill yourself. If you are not filled, you will continue to pour until there's nothing left to pour and then you can't pour again. Taking care of yourself, of course, has multiple facets. There is the physical, so make sure that you are exercising, sleeping, doing the things that you need to do for your body. Um, also making sure that you're eating well, eating the right foods, eating the right quantity, eating often enough, not overeating, you know, 
being hydrated, all that stuff. There's also the social, which I kind of touched on with the community. So just making sure that you're keeping in touch with people and that you're actually checking in with people, people who can um, gauge you, like people who might be able to tell like, hey, I think you might be struggling or I think you might be exhibiting symptoms of, you know, whether it's postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression, but people who can actually keep a good pulse check on you to get you aware of spaces where you may need help. It also is important to take care of yourself spiritually. I think for me, it was more so trying to navigate it and find time to have one-on-one -on -one with God. Even though it was mostly an opportunity for me to kind of pour into myself and just spend time with God, it was also an opportunity for me to have an understanding of what motherhood should look like um, based on you know biblical principles and giving myself a roadmap that I could attain to. Finally, the last thing that I have found extremely helpful for me in embracing this season is showing up as my best self. Um, that you are in any role in life does not mean that you cannot be your best self in that role. So whatever your best self was prior to getting into that role, continue to keep that best self. You know, there's this quote that I love that says, imagine your best self, now show up as her. And I feel like for me, that's kind of what I'm doing now because I just feel like I want to really always put forth my best effort in the spaces and places where I feel like it matters with the people that matter to me. Um, for me as an introvert, you know, I don't speak a lot unless I have to, but I try not to, I, I don't always like feel inclined to speak a lot. And so for me, being my best self in terms of how I'm dressed, in terms of how I speak when I do have to speak, in terms of how I, you know, even sit my posture, how I present myself, how I treat people. For me, that's really important because I think it speaks far greater volumes than the few words that I speak when I don't have to speak would ever say. I'm not going to lie. When I'm out at the grocery store, you might not even recognize me and it's okay. I like it like that. But I made up my mind that if I have somewhere to be, <laughs> baby, I'm going to be somewhere looking like somebody. And the truth is, for most of us, when you actually put forth the effort to look good, you usually feel good as well. Now, I'm just going to say, with these three tips that I've given out, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that you have to give yourself time and grace, okay? This is not the time to be, this is not the time to be pressured by snapback culture or by like that social media mom persona. This is an important time for you to rest, to heal, to bond with your child, and to figure out what works for you. You don't have to be that mom who has everything color-coded. You don't have to be that person that's, you know, back to wearing the same clothes after two weeks. Like, do what works best based on you and your family, and just find the time to love yourself through the process. 